Hello and welcome to my heroic ultimate tier list for Warcraft 3. I just did a tier list for heroes and much of my discourse on which heroes are best in Warcraft 3 and which are worst is about how frequently are you actually picking this hero. After all, a hero that never ever gets picked can't be that good, right? Players generally do things that they think are productive, that are going to help them win the game, etc. This is a different tier list. Here I'm asking the question, if you were to get a hero to level 6 in a 1v1 game of Warcraft 3, and we'll, we'll kind of look at FFA as well, because it's 1v1, v1, v1, but we're excluding team play from this. If you were to get a hero to level 6, which ultimate would you be happiest with? If you could get anything for your birthday, what would you want to get? Yeah, leave me a comment in the comments below. What would you want to get for your birthday? If it's, if it's simple, maybe I can do it, like a shout out of your name. If it's a Maserati, I'm afraid not. I'm not an alpha male guru. But anyway, let's go look into which ultimates are the best of the best, which are the worst, and which are just perfectly average. Let's begin. Hero tier list, uh, hero ultimate tier list. Uh, beginning at the top left. These are sorted in no particular order, so let's just begin at the very top. And also, can I just express my extreme appreciation for the simplicity and the beauty of these icons? I know Reforged brought us many good things, and it also brought some art, and I'm not a huge fan, but the classic art just slaps, man. Does it make anyone else happy to see this list of uh, icons? But anyway, I digress. L enough fanboying. Animate Dead. Where does Animate Dead go? So. I'm going to ignore how ubiquitously uh, used the Death Knight is for Undead, how quintessential he is for underpinning their entire army, etc. Or where I rated him in the tier list of heroes, that doesn't matter. The question now is, if you were able to unlock any ultimate, would you be happy if it was Anime Dead? So what Anime Dead does, it actually changed a little bit. Uh, anime Dead was rebalanced recently. What it used to do is create six invincible undead raised from nearby corpses, prioritizing the highest level corpses. And you could do a really cool thing where you kill extremely high level creeps on the map, load them into the meat wagon, bring out your dead! You load them onto the meat wagon, you preserve their corpses forever, you put them in formaldehyde, and then you summon Anime Dead and you can get some level eight Magnetor Reavers. Uh, that are also invincible and have chaos damage, etc. Anime Dead was rebalanced recently. In a recent patch, Anime Dead now summons six undead still, but they're no longer invincible, unattackable, and undispellable. They now are attackable, which means that they function as a tank. Yes, they can be taken down to remove their threat, but generally this is cast in the second half of battle, uh, when some units have died on your side and some units have died on my side and then anime dead comes out and it's supposed to help tip the tide right and although they were invincible sometimes that actually is not so useful because you want them to take stray fire uh, from an opponent so that your real units that do not unsummon 30 seconds 45 seconds later uh, don't end up taking that damage so arguably being able to take damage on these corpses uh, it's actually a good thing for the undead player anyway, for the caster of anime dead. And they also spread disease cloud now, which is a new invention that... I, I know there's going to be a couple of people watching this list that do not play Warcraft 3 anymore, but did used to play back in 2004. And for some reason, YouTube recommended them this video. <laughs> and they're not going to use this video to change their lives. They're not going to use this video to choose the correct hero to play so that they can get that ultimate. They just think, that's interesting, that's fun, I used to love this game, maybe I still do, right? Uh, and they're not going to know, they are unaware that Anime Dead uh, now spreads Disease Cloud, provided Disease Cloud is researched. Yes, that's another new patch from the last two years or so. So with all that, I've really gassed it up, haven't I? Uh, that sounds pretty damn good, except it isn't. Death Knights that reach level 6 often don't even pick this because they'd rather get uh, the third point in Coil, they already have it. They'd rather get third point in Unholy Aura and then probably at level 7 Death Knight, they're gonna get Death Pact to keep their Death Knights alive. And then maybe at level 8 they might take Animate Dead. 
Now, occasionally you'll take anime dead at level 6, but it is so exceedingly rare. 1. To have mana. 2. To have desirable corpses. And 3. To actually feel like it's going to be valuable enough to uh, make a big impact. Anime dead is a really cool idea, uh, and it, sh it should not be that bad. It sounds pretty good. But usually when DK gets level 6, he doesn't have the mana for it. And that means he'll make a split decision to favor the game better in another way. I'm gonna say it's not as bad as it seems that it never gets picked. Because it unlocks similar amount of damage probably to Metamorphosis. Which is going to be quite good. But it just always seems kind of underwhelming. I've, I've rarely ever seen this decide any games. And I think I have to put it either in tier C or in tier B. Um, it really isn't that bad. It has some extra utility. I think honestly it's a tier B and the reason that we still don't see it is because Coil is so good. You guys think it's tier C? Really? But it does... You could summon... Let, let's not go for like the highest possible outcome on anime dead. You're likely going to be summoning three troll berserkers, two ghouls and a fiend. How much damage is that? That's more damage than Avatar, that's more damage than Metamorphosis. It's probably more damage than what a Doom Guard does. And then you can also uh, harvest it for health and mana with uh, Lich and DK. What's not to like? I think... I think it's a B. But that is a lot of conditionals. That is true. And conditionality also tanks. A... Okay, I'll put it in C. Next, Avatar. Avatar is uh, pretty cool. You get bonus auto attack damage. Uh, you get bonus um, uh, magic immunity on the Mountain King. And I believe you get uh, armor or health or something. This is pretty damn good. Uh, the only limit is the amount of mana that it costs. This is a strong, strong ability. You can no longer get hexed. You cannot get war stamped. You cannot get mana burned anymore, which may earn itself back in a single mana burn 150 mana burn 150 avatar uh, i think this is a solid tier a it is not completely a game winning heroic ability a uh, game winning ult that once you cast it it's over it doesn't have the splash of impact upon summoning but it is so good it, it does so many different things so survivable it can pr protect your mana pool against blood major or demon hunter or wisp it can protect you from getting stunned, which means you keep your effective damage output. You get a lot of survivability, so you can tank a lot more effectively. That's a tier A. Tier A for Avatar, if we needed any more explanation. That's serendipitous, isn't it? So, next. This is a strange icon. I kind of have to think what this is, actually. <laughs> I don't see this a lot. A big bad voodoo. Or more like Big Bad Doodoo, am I right? Doodoo for D? No, I'm not right. And that was an immature connection to make. Big Bad Voodoo is okay. It is okay. It turns... Uh, keep in mind, this tier list is for 1 on 1. In 4 on 4, this can be really good or really bad. The biggest downsides from Big Bad Voodoo are 200 mana cost, which could have been heal waves, is interruptible by... Anything that does a stun, right? Or a silence, which usually people get. Uh, and it removes positive buffs from allied units. That's another problem. Those are the main problems. So Bloodlust and Spirit Link is gone. And in 4 on 4, you also remove ally Unholy Frenzy, Inner Fire, Speed Scroll. You know, th th that's all kind of a big downside. Big Bad Voodoo is not something I usually pick up at level 6, and when I do, I almost always regret it. It's because of all the downsides and counterplay. Nonetheless, it is not useless. I'm gonna rate this in tier C as well. Most likely, tier C is gonna be all the abilities that uh, you usually don't pick when you get level 6. Which, I mean, that's your heroic ability tier. That's your ult tier. You should be wanting to pick them. Right? Like, you get to level 6, you're supposed to have a party. And if you don't pick it routinely, then it's a C. I think that makes sense. And that's absolutely true for both of these two. Okay, next. Silence. Ooh. Silence from Dark Ranger. This spell is amazing. You instantly kill 
and then take it for yourself so not kill but all right it, it, do, it doesn't kill but you take it so as far as the opponent is concerned you're dead to me you're dead to me you, you don't work for me anymore you're dead to me but they're not really dead are they because they work against their uh former allies now for 150 mana and a 45 second cooldown charm is one of the most crazy price pointed spells there is and the crazy cooldown points as well now I, I couldn't believe it to see how short the cooldown is and in fact is it that short let, let me not uh misinform people it's either 45 seconds or uh, or it's like uh one minute let me see charm is 45 second cooldown 700 range instantly take control of a target enemy unit of course also works on creeps which is pretty um pretty nice this one is great for content first of all like i love that this exists but it is so sick it's so good uh you're starting in a regular game of uh warcraft 3 one-on-one -on -one, and i shouldn't think too much about like regular game flow but i mean you can start stealing kodo beast you can steal one enemy bear you can steal a knight a mortar team just an instant kill button is so valuable and on such a short cooldown and for a race night elf anyway usually goes for this that has stuff of uh, preservation you can just steal and run there's so much utility for this um undead if undead ever gets their third hero to this it's just gonna be insane the question is would you ever not pick charm if you get level six hell no hell still no you always take this you always take this and i think half half the heroes in the game would sell their sister for uh for for having charm instead like it's, it's insane it's totally crazy uh, it's gonna be tier s for me death and decay from the lich death and decay is part of a list of ultimate abilities that blizzard thought could be pretty cool because they kill buildings and i think 2002 blizzard not erroneously predicted that building killing ults are going to be very strong death and decay tornado you know stampede uh, earthquake because what's the goal of the game it's not kill all the units it's kill all the buildings you kill all the buildings you win the game right and, and then people of course are going to tower up to defend so how do you break a tower line well with an ult of course but reign of chaos and tft are quite different there was more creeping there was less aggression there was less skill there was less timing based attacks and it was just a slower game in general uh, reign of chaos and so as it turns out these abilities now death and decay does do damage against units as well it's four percent per second on anything but as it turns out you can just interrupt the lich and death and decay comes at an extremely high 250 mana price point it has a very important purpose many undeads will actually pick this at level six because by the time you get your second hero to level six uh, you may be faced with um, a base trade situation and it is very good in particular on human masonry castle uh, masonry castle with three levels of masonry or two levels of masonry it's gonna have like three and a half four thousand health eight armor fortified armor uh it's insane and then this will kill a castle just as fast as it will kill a farm because it's percentage based damage and that's the only thing in the game that does that to buildings actually i never understood that images that arose i'm glad you asked i'm glad you asked yes i was preparing uh that was actually the only preparation i did for making this video besides dedicating my whole life to warcraft 3. i also thought why is there a rose but i did the mental legwork and death and decay uh makes living things decay what is more of a symbol of life and growth than a rose and then the kiss from a rose and so when decay comes the rose wilts and it is sad so death and decay is a description of the passage of things that are alive of beauty all beauty must die very sad next doom if you get doom does that doom your opponent on average i would say usually yes i rate doom a little worse than charm i think it is tier a it's either s or a uh, i've had doom once in a tournament that was a lot of fun it summons a doom guard doom guard is dispellable 
that makes him sometimes less of a threat than a unit from charm uh doom guard does attack air uh it can attack air even though it's melee just like alchemist it has chaos damage it has war stamp dispel and rain of fire and all of it is summoned like sigourney weaver's alien from the womb of a unit that you cast it on doom like in dota is a kind of a fact it is a fact once you cast doom on someone they cannot be um saved it's like final destination uh, there they cannot be saved but there's a couple of uh, tricks you can do you can put a doomed unit in a zeppelin and then you can fly them over unpassable terrain and then when the doom guard is summoned from the womb of the victim there's no place to go so it just disappears it's this level of control that the victim has over uh you know how doom unpacks that makes me not rate it at tier s if this was an instant kill and it summoned a doom guard immediately 100 percent tier ss right uh, a doomed unit will keep taking damage and when he dies it summons the doom guard right but but that delay makes doom less good than charm in my opinion can you heal the unit yes you can you can try to keep them alive but the doom will never stop you cannot dispel the doom and uh that actually for two cooperating players that are at war with each other you could wait for doom cooldown to come back and keep them alive over and over and over and over and over and eventually you can have an army of 20 doom guards because the units that got doomed were all kept alive uh, by the opponent uh, what happened if a doomed unit is in a kodo? I don't think you can. Doomed units are magic immune to, uh, to I think, to kodo devour and, and many other things. So, doom is uh, very good, but the enemy player has some counterplay. They can move the affected unit to a less relevant area, and doom guard can be dispelled. Still, very strong spell and fun. Earthquake from Farseer. Earthquake from Farseer does not do any damage to units but will greatly slow them i believe it's 70 percent slow 70 percent slow in an area it's a relatively long channel let's see 75 percent slow excuse me 90 second cooldown duration is 20 seconds it deals 60 damage per second to buildings so uh, it can kill farms in half its channel time right 600 damage and so that's pretty cool uh it's also cheaper uh, i think it was made cheaper yeah i call this recently you'll forgive me my uh recency bias earthquake was recently uh buffed from 150 to 25 mana about four years ago which is extremely recent and about half a year after reforged came out that's a good change because it wasn't that uh good to begin with so that's Earthquake for you. Where does that go? I think Earthquake is actually not so bad because it is cheap and it can kill some buildings. Uh, I've actually found Earthquake to be a game ender sometimes. Breaking some structural uh, fortifications. Um, you can even use it in battle and the opponent becomes very slow and cannot run away. Uh, many times Earthquake will win the game because of the wrong reasons. And it is BM. <laughs> It's like Manor Mules in StarCraft. Earthquake is so bad, traditionally, so useless, that the only reason I would pick it is if I'm winning anyway. And if I do pick it, I'm going to immediately use it on your army because I'm afraid you're gonna leave the game soon and I won't get to cast my ult. And if I'm casting Earthquake on your army, which isn't a very good use of Earthquake, and you see that it deals mental damage because it is like me saying I can throw away my ult and still win. The mental damage that inflicts on the opponent is usually enough for them to leave. So I've unironically seen Earthquake finish more games than Bladestorm. And I'm not even joking. Bladestorm people are like, ah! Oh, wait, actually, <laughs> I'm all right. That's fine. Yeah, I just sidestepped. And Earthquake is like, this f***ing guy, this guy is trying to humiliate me. Well, not today. I have a life. This, this nerd, I'm out. So I think Earthquake is good for mental damage. And because of this, it could be in tier B. But realistically, it's an interrupt 
It's an interruptible ultimate. Uh, it doesn't affect battles all that much. It is picked mostly for memes because Chain Lightning 3 and Feral Spirit 3 are better. I'm not going to put it in D because it's unironically quite often useful when you play Farsi or TC style. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a game ender. Would anyone pick Earthquake if they held alternatives? Uh, usually not, right? But I'm not going to say it's useless. Sometimes it's uh, it, it may be what you want. Uh, so tier C. Next up, Inferno. One of the few heroic abilities, the few ults, that has never been nerfed or buffed. 2002 Blizzard that shipped the game. I don't know when they came up with the idea, but Inferno was part of the Dreadlord, which is Reign of Chaos. For all I know, they came up with what Warcraft 3 was going to be like. You know, they, they obviously worked on it for, for on it for a few years. I don't know during which part of Warcraft 3's inception uh, Infernal was uh, brought up as an idea. But for all we know, this, this idea got cooked up 24 years ago and it has never needed a nerf or a buff. Uh, and this ult is, I think, one of the best in the game. What does Infernal do? Well, what doesn't it do? It can't make ice in summer. That's a pity. Yeah, it won't bring your beer out of the fridge for you neither. You need one of these uh, for that. We're currently out of uh, commission, but uh, it does pretty much everything else. Uh, stun on impact. 1600 health. Has a burning aura effect. Right? Chaos melee attack damage. And is magic immune and undispellable. It's insane. It benefits from vampiric aura. It can be coiled to keep it alive. Uh, it's fast. It's really just quite fast. It's an absolute unit. It's a monster. And it's a complete game ender. It's a complete game winner. And <laughs> the duration... The duration is as long as the cooldown. I'm not I'm not kidding. It's true. <laughs> I mean I don't know what they were smoking. It must have been some good stuff. I think they were enjoying StarCraft 1's success. I think this is when Blizzard's arrogance truly began. They said we can get away with it too. Watch us. <laughs> 180 second cooldown. 180 second duration. Who's gonna stop us? Westwood Studios? <laughs> <laughs> they won that battle already. Uh, oh, command and command, come on. And, and so it's just insane. It's insane. Uh, absolutely tier S, no doubt. And by the way, these are not in order, the tiers of the ultimates. Right? I'm not saying this is better or that is better. All right, next. Oh, and it destroys trees. True, true. Okay, next. Uh, Crip, Crip, Lord, uh, uh, Crip Lord Swarm, Locust Swarm. Right, Locust Swarm is a, a lot of little locusts flying around the Crypt Lord uh, that will deal damage and upon return to the Crypt Lord will heal him. Pretty cool, right? Pretty cool. And I think it hits air and it hits other things. This ability is actually modeled after the carrier flagship from Protoss in Starcraft 1. It's locusts are like interceptors, let's say. And in addition to damage, it also deals uh, healing to the Crypt Lord. This ability is disappointing when you expect a lot. But is it better? Is it preferable to Earthquake, Death and Decay, Big Bad Voodoo and Animate Dead? I'd say yes. It deals damage just like Animate Dead. It's ranged and unmissable. Like it doesn't get mitigated by armor. Uh, it heals the hero, unlike Animate Dead, right? For an extra cast. Uh, it makes you not want to be near the Crypt Lord. I think it's at the very bottom of B. It's the very bottom of B. It's at the end. If bottom, the... Anyway, it's really the bottom of B or the top of C, I think. And maybe Big Bad Voodoo or Animate Dead... No, but the difference is you de you definitely do pick this at level six though. Like if you had the choice, and if you had the choice of Avatar and Locust Swarm, I don't think it's a no-brainer to go Avatar every time. Yeah, okay, it is it is a solid B. It is a solid B, and we didn't have any B yet. I've been told the tier lists need to be a bell curve. So if I'm all S and uh, D, if I'm all S and D, that's not healthy. You need to be more balanced around the middle. So, 
Phoenix. Ooh, Phoenix. Phoenix is so freaking good. It's the Blood Mage ultimate ability. It creates a flying uh, Phoenix that rapidly decays in health by itself. And when it reaches zero, either from damage or from its decay, it turns into a relatively surprisingly tanky egg that must be killed in a period of like five seconds or something. And if you don't kill it, it comes back to full life as a Phoenix once again. So thematic, so cool. And while it is alive, it deals something like 60, 70 magic damage. Let's take a look at its full stats. Phoenix, summons a powerful Phoenix, has spell immunity and resistant skin, and the egg hatches into a Phoenix, right? It's 180 second cooldown. The Phoenix itself has many uh, traits. 10 second egg, immune to negative spells, and the Phoenix fire, uh, it also has an AOE ability, which is um, fires down streams of flame. Not the best tooltip, but it's not Hearthstone level uh, tooltips. There are streams of flame, it's gonna hurt. How many? Uh, two damage per second, and then also 20 damage on impact. I mean, there's just a lot of fire, okay? Don't ask too many questions. 61 to 76 uh, damage, which also deals splash. Full 61 to 76 in a tiny 25 radius, and then it starts having a drop off area uh, of half damage and a quarter damage. Range is 600, attack cooldown 1.4. Overall, that's a lot of fire everywhere. There's going to be lots and lots of fire. This is a very strong ability. I feel like this is a game winning ability as well. It's either going to be S or A, but where Infernal has an immediate stun and Charm has an immediate uh, unit kill, Phoenix is just lots of damage uh, in a sustained manner. And Depending on the situation, it is going to have less impact than Charm and Infernal. I think it is at the very tippy top of tier A. If it tippied any more, it would fall off right, right off the tier list. So I think it's tippy top tier A. I know I said there's no order, but I'm just putting it here so that that, that much is uh, so that you understand. By the way, they're very similar, Doom and Phoenix. What? It's almost like the same hand. Mass teleportation. One of a few heroic abilities that is actually castable outside of combat and even without contact with the opponent. Charm, you can cast it outside of combat and be happy with it. Earthquake can be out of combat, but during a base raid. Mass teleportation uh, gets you out of combat, into combat, and gets you to dodge combat, and it's really, really insane. I will say that it got a little worse because Brilliant Aura got nerfed a couple of years ago, aka very recently. You don't have as much mana for it as back in the day in 2004. Uh, it is a drain on your mana. You can also only take like 24 units, so it's not as good as a town portal. But it is extremely good. Generally, human will always take this when they can. Generally, when you get to this point, you're already doing at least some base trading or defending satellite bases or attacking satellite bases. Mass teleport gets better the better you are by hiding mechanical critters, by using invisible sorceress units to teleport towards, by anticipating and foreseeing the future, knowing where you are going to need to be, where your opponent is going to be, etc. I think mass teleportation. I'm just going to stop shy from putting it in tier S because I don't think mass teleport creates brute force victories, but it is a tier A. It is for me a tier A. Maybe it's an S, but uh, there's definitely going to be a portion of games where once you get mass teleport, it does not uh, provide a route to victory. Uh, th I, this is for one on one. This is for one on one. I'm not talking about four on four or FFA. I will say for some of these, this is the ability in FFA, right? But I'm not ranking these based on FFA. I'm just saying, yes, in FFA, this is a tier S, 100%. I, I think in one on one, it's a tier A, but also at the top. Metamorphosis. Ooh. Metamorphosis is a game winner for me. That's a tier S, straight up. We call this guy Superman. 
anyone would want to go metamorphosis any hero that could would want to turn their attack from melee into 600 range from non-splash into splash three health regeneration per second extra 500 bonus max health and 500 bonus current health at a one minute duration with just a what is it two three minutes cooldown you turn on meta generally you win the game metamorphosis has a 45 second duration and oh yeah and it turns his attack to chaos <laughs> which means he he kills buildings just as fast as he kills anything else the splash on his attack is so big that when he attacks a town hall which is four by four that repairing peasants still die <laughs> when he attacks it that's how big it is it's so big that when you have five towers next to each other in a line if he attacks the middle one the outer ones also take damage that's how big the splash is and unlike catapults who also have some splash damage catapult splash doesn't work when you click on a building it only works when you attack ground on a building so like a catapult if there's five towers and a catapult if he attacks the middle only hit the middle but if he splashes at where the middle is you can hit all three but meta is all five so meta is more splash than a catapult it is really crazy and it's a game winner and by the way once this is over he loses the 500 max health but he does not lose the 500 current health so in theory if he goes from 500 health out of a thousand he then goes to a thousand out of 1500 when he metas and if all other things are equal when he goes back down to a thousand max he stays at a thousand current it doesn't convert him back to a percentage of what he was or take away the current health because if that were the if if it would take away the same current health he could die from it if he's at 480 life but it could do the percentage of preservation but it doesn't do that either the preservation of percentage it ju it's just the 500 so it's a greater heal potion at the very least uh, metamorphosis and then there's all the offensive potential the only counter to meta during all of the pro games i've ever seen is either you lose and you go next or you run you cannot stand against this so the best way to play against it is to force him to use it in his own base so that when you run he doesn't destroy and level your base until it looks like the netherlands flat as a coin right if he turns on meta in your base uh your whole base is gonna die right so uh meta tier s let's move on next resurrection Ooh resurrection what do you guys think i know what i think i think this is one of the most op abilities that turns out usually not to be that crazy op do you pick it most likely yes unless you're full air or mechanical so it's not tier c is it garbage no it's not tier d is it tier s does it win you the game when you pick it no your unit first needs to die condition one then you need to have enough units die for this to matter resurrect is the cast of three holy lights and you can revive six units in order for resurrect to be good minimum three units need to be dead to resurrect them to full life they need to have a corpse still aka not consumed by necromancer rod of necromancy or exploded by splash damage in which case there is no corpse you need to have the mana to cast because the unit died they will have given experience to the opponent so you are remaking the unit instead of preventing it from dying with premeditated holy lights the cooldown is long um, it only works on ground it doesn't work on air it doesn't work on mechanical mk pala often doesn't play with ground because ground is enabled by archmage that means pala's third you don't get this often but it's not about how often you get it it's about if you get it do you pick it yes you pick it there are cases where you may not pick it at level six it's not going to be a tier s this is by my deduction absolutely an a or a b and in terms of impact oh there's one more condition on on on, on this of course that is tied in with the rest uh, you cannot cast it in the first 10 seconds of a battle every tier a 
has an impact in the first 10 seconds of a battle. Mass teleport, you're not in the battle. Or you are in the battle because of it. That's an impact. Phoenix has done over probably 800 damage in the first 10 seconds. Doom, likewise, that much damage. Avatar is doing a lot of damage and tanking. But Resurrect, you're just waiting to use it for a while. And then you may en end up never using it. It is better than these chumps over here. So Resurrect is tier B. It's a strong B. I mean, it can feel like an A, but because of its conditionality, it's a tier B. Next, Robogobo Robo from the Goblin Tinker. This is a 25 mana toggle that turns the Tinker from a biological unit to a mechanical unit. The Tinker, when he's in his mechanical form, can be repaired by workers. Normally, repair costs a percentage of the original building time, and it also has a repair speed that is a percentage with some formula of the original building duration. And the building cost uh, percentage for the repair cost. Tinker never got made as a building. So I don't know what formula they use, but they settled on something behind the scenes. And so there is a cost and there is a time to repair him. And it, it's quite funny that it works that way. So when he's a mechanical, he's also immune to most spells. Uh, you cannot, for instance, heal wave him with Shadow Hunter. You cannot heal from Moonwell while he's a mechanical. You need to first teleport or well, transfer back. While he is in Tinker form, uh, he gets a uh, an ability called Demolisher, he gets a lot of bonus damage. A lot of bonus damage on buildings. He also gets movement speed, I believe, but let's just uh, look it up. Robogobo, a powerful armored form. One to two to three to four bonus armor and five, seven, nine or 11 bonus strength. And the funny thing is, he is an intelligence hero. <laughs> so it's not like he gets bonus damage from this. He just gets bonus health and regen from it. So bonus strength and armor is a weird ass bonus to get for an intelligence based hero. And what I don't see here, oh yeah. Use of the demolish ability. Bonus damage against buildings. He gets a multiplier against buildings. Depends on his passive, but at best it's a three and a half times multiplier. So let's say that he deals 50 damage. That is going to be a 165 damage on buildings which is insane and I don't know and that's still of course reduced by fortified armor and is fortified armor style like both the amount and the type of fortified armor uh, 175 is it 175 okay cool uh, so he's just very good against buildings uh, with this and that's pretty powerful is Tinker a fight winner is it a game winner because you don't have to win fights for an ult to be top tier you can also win the game. Mass teleport, you can just eliminate someone with it sometimes, right? It doesn't have to be a fight winner as long as it gives you an insane amount of map control. And I would say Goblin Tinker mech is extremely useful. You can kill buildings very fast, you're magic immune, uh, you're, you're, you're a lean fighting machine once you get it. But I can't put it... Can I? I could... I mean, I could do anything I want. It's my list. This is actually a tough one. It's going to be either tier A or B. First of all, 100%, you are picking it. It's not a tier C. You are picking it every time when you get to level 6. Does it have the same impact as Infernal, Metamorphosis, and Charm? No. So it's obviously an A or a B. Is it better than Locust Swarm? Yes. I feel like it's better than Locust Swarm. Is it better than... Resurrect. I feel like it's better than Resurrect. I feel like you're using this all the time, whereas with Resurrect, you're constantly waiting to maybe use it. You're using this all the time. Is it better than Avatar, Doom, Phoenix, or Mass Teleport? Sometimes. Sometimes. I think sometimes it is better than these. It's either bottom of A or B. I think we need more Bs. I'm gonna put it in B, but it's the best of B. Next, Warden, Avatar of Vengeance. Avatar of Vengeance is a magic immune 
ranged summon with very modest damage. It summons little uh, spirits of vengeance from corpses up to six at the same time. The spirits are magic immune and physically immune. The boss is only magic immune, but not physically immune. So basically you cannot stop them except by stopping them, literally surrounding or body blocking them. They have a ranged piercing attack damage, these six little crit critters, and they last for a decent period of time. And they can be resummoned all the time, so long as the boss is alive. Once the boss dies, all the little minions scatter. The minions cannot be killed, so they don't give XP. The boss, of course, does give XP. Avatar of Vengeance is particularly fantastic at killing workers and then using those little spirits to kill casters. Because they do piercing damage, they try to run down things like Dryads, Druids of the Talon, Sorceresses, Priests, Shamans. This ult has a lot of utility. The little avatars could be used for scouting, but generally they're not. Usually it's combined with Warden's Kit. It's very well combinable with Warden's Kit of murdering workers with Fan of Knives, and then you summon the avatar, and you start making lots of uh, spirits from this. In my previous tier list video, I talked about a Warden level 10 game, and I made this noise, ping! And I said, if you want to see a Warden video, you can click on the video in the description with a portrait that looks like this. But my editor ended up missing that moment, so I'm gonna try again. Ping! 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 If you want to see a Warden level 10, ping! It's right there. Well, it's gonna be really awkward if it's not there, but we'll try again next video. <laughs> uh, where does Avatar of Vengeance go? It's better than all this crap. It's a tier A uh, for me, clearly. It's not gonna be a tier S. This is a this is an A. I don't think it's as game winning as uh, all them others, but it is a very very good ability that you would always pick. Tier A, Stampede on Beastmaster. Mm, what do you think, Stampede? This is a channeled ability that deals building and player damage. He summons lizards from behind himself, but keep in mind you can just turn 360 degrees and look in the other direction. So it's behind you instead of behind me, right? You can just turn around. And in that case, the lizards actually appear inside of your army. Isn't it rhinos? Yeah, it's actually Kodos most likely. But the thing is, the icon, the icon looks like a Kodo or a rhino or a Stegosaurus. But when you actually look in the game, they are lizards. So it is actually lizards. Uh, in fact, they're a bit of thunder lizards, aren't they? Because they're the, the green one from the green map. So it is an icon misrepresentation. This is perhaps the greatest show of misrepresentation problematic uh, in Blizzard right now. There's a lot of discourse about other less important problems in Overwatch or this or that. But I think this is a big problem. This should be a green lizard, but there's a gray Kodo. So anyways, uh, how good is Stampede? I think it's 60 splash damage per hit. This thing used to be so sick. People were rushing Stampede all the time. There's this Hearthstone player, Savich. He was guilty of being an unethical Stampede abuser. He was actually a very good player in early days in Warcraft 3. Then he became a Hearthstone very good player. Uh, but yeah, it's 60 damage for a period of 30 seconds. Two beasts per second. Here, they smartly don't specify which beasts it is. Right? But it, look, Thunder Lizards. There we go. So uh, Stampede is quite strong when you're allowed to fully channel it. I would say if you were allowed to fully channel it in combat or in someone's base, that's a tier A. Maybe an S but you are not allowed to fully channel it. And I'm trying to forget for the moment that Beastmaster is not a very good hero right now. That part doesn't matter. Would you pick Stampede on Warden? Probably because you would have anti-magic shell that makes it more difficult to interrupt the Stampede, right? Night Elf might pick Stampede for sure. Would, uh, it, it, would I pick Stampede if it was my ability on Farseer? Probably. I'm gonna say it is not good enough to be an A, but it's a B. 
among the channeled abilities, which of course mass teleport is as well, among the channeled in combat abilities, this is the only one that I think I'm gonna rate B or higher. Okay, next. Ooh, <laughs> Moonfire. No, this isn't Moonfire. This is Heroes of the Storm Moonfire. I'm sure this has its meaning in World of Warcraft as well. This is Starfall. Starfall is perhaps the prettiest ult with the least pretty icon. Where does Starfall go? In the bottom Mass Hunts era, this was the shiz because you have Priestess Mass Hunts, I have Priestess Mass Hunts, but only one of us is casting Starfall first and it's gonna decimate the entire army of the opponent. Even though Decimate's supposed to be 10% kill of everything, but it's gonna be more than 10%. Decimate has been co-opted to mean blow to smithereens, so I'm gonna use it wrongly, just like with everyone else. It is going to obliterate armies. The problem is... Well, let's put it this way. Would I pick Starfall on, on Fires here? It, if I could? Probably yes. Would I pick it on Blood Mage instead of Phoenix? No. I think Starfall is a B. I actually thought I was going to place this in C, but that doesn't make sense. Starfall deals building damage in a very large area for a very long period of time. It also deals unit damage. It is a little RNG with who and when it hits, but um, this is something that must be responded to. Even though all these things can't be cancelled, they must be responded to or they will win you the battle. It's a slow release advantage. Kind of like a slow release vitamin C pill. It's not like a shot of adrenaline like the Infernal, but it's definitely good enough to be played. And you will pick it if you have the mana for it at all. Next up, Storm, Earth and Fire. Am I gonna beat around the bush? No. It's 100%, it's a tier S. I'm not gonna beat around the bush and delay and build up suspense here. Everybody knows this is a tier S. We're looking at a DPS output of over 200. Three separate pandas. All three must die for panda to die. Panda still gains experience while the pandas are there. Panda's main body is unattackable, right? It is a second health bar and a third and a fourth. And then he goes back to the original which, if I'm not mistaken, is regenerating health and mana while absent in the spirit realm. It unlocks Immolation, Taunt, Magic Immunity, Stone Skin. I don't know what Stone Skin is, but it sounds cool. I think that's actually the name of one of the Magic Immunities. It unlocks Burning Aura, Cyclone, Dispel, Windwalk. It does almost everything there is in the game. <laughs> almost everything. Uh, splash damage. He has pulverize on the on the earth one. Right? It's it's really insane. It's really insane. Uh, this is a tier S. This is absolutely a game winner. And the only thing that stops you from casting this thing sometimes is because you cannot use basic abilities on Panda while you're getting the other fifteen hundred abilities. And Drunken Haze Fire Breath is so freaking good at killing ground, but especially also at killing air, that you may not cast this instantly if you're fighting against gargoyles. You first want to Drunken Haze Fire Breath the gargs, and then when your abilities are on cooldown, then you cast it. That's the only reason you don't press the red button of the ult the moment you catch any wind of a threat. It's like boom, st storm earth and fire, hit my call. So, very strong. Now. Tornado. For Nagatar! Naga Sea Witch and the Tornado. How good is this? This doesn't deal damage on units, but it does cyclone them. There is a chance to cyclone them. It also greatly slows uh, units that are walking inside the tornado. Turns out it's pretty difficult to walk through a tornado. How much does it slow? I would say 70% if I had to guess. The slow area is 60, but how much does it slow? Uh, we don't know how much it slows, but it slows air and ground. Uh, oh, here it is. Tornado brings units to minimum speed, unless their speed is 350 or faster. 
There are only two or three such units in the game. It also slows air, unlike Earthquake. That's insane. Tornado also tosses units every three seconds and the toss lasts for 12 seconds. And by toss it's a cyclone. They can only cyclone a particular unit once every 22 seconds. Uh, tornado speed is 75, that means that Tornado more or less could disable four units continuously. It can also toss heroes and break channel spells potentially. Tornado was rebalanced very recently, four years ago. Random wonder behavior removed, mana cost dropped to 125, duration reduced from 40 to 20. Close by building damage per second increased from 50 to 100 and far building damage from 7 to 14. I think Tornado is actually pretty good. The main knock against it is that usually Naga doesn't have mana when she wants to cast it. But this isn't... I mean, it is, a, it is partially about the hero that casts the ability. I think Tornado is better and more disruptive than Earthquake because it interrupts channels. It does a similar slow, maybe more so even. No damage though. But I don't think it's good enough to contend with Starfall, Stampede, Robogobo, uh, Resurrection and even Carry and Swarm. So it's going to be a C for me. It comes from relatively far away, Tornado. I do like it. I do think you pick it from time to time. But I think in most games, you will pick Frost, Arrow 3, Fork Lightning 3 before you pick up Tornado. And you may even pick up Mana Shield. You may even pick up Mana Shield before you take Tornado, which means you may only pick Tornado at level 10. If I don't have any tier D by the time I'm done with this, I don't consider that a failure, even though tier list purists may say that every tier list must be a bell curve, so there must at least be something on tier D. I would only put abilities there that you would never take. Tranquility. Tranquility is one of the few abilities, together with mass teleportation, that is very useful to cast outside of battle. Doing an area of effect healing for a long channel period is such a good ability and the cooldown is insane. Mass teleportation cooldown uh, is 16 seconds, I think, which also makes it very good outside of combat. Uh, we've got the tranquility. If I'm not mistaken, it's going to be 45 seconds, which uh, 12 second duration. Oh, it's uh, it must have been nerfed. Two minutes cooldown. Let's see. Keeper got rebalanced a lot. Bear with me. Tranquility invul. Oh yeah, <laughs> they gave invulnerability for like a few seconds or a second or something to tranquility at some point. Here, tranquility has been reworked. Now gives three seconds invul at the start of the cast. The heal amount has been doubled, but the duration is halved. This just completely broke Keeper, man. This was the Matt Morris patch. But it has been walked back a bit. Invul duration is now one second, five years ago. Uh, in 2020, invul time is gone. Duration is now 12 seconds, healing 48. So they kept buffing the healing per second while reducing the duration. That's 100% buffs, right? It was actually not bad in 2010. Can I just say that? It was not bad in 2010. It was a one minute cooldown for... 125 mana healing 20 per second that's pretty damn good now it heals 48 per second so more than twice as what it used to do back in the time when i was competing actively more than twice as much as that um but it's on the two minutes cooldown now where did they change the cooldown oh yeah there we go cooldown in 19 january last year oh, okay that's extremely recent yeah, so with that, I still think it might be tier S. It's either going to be S or A. It has mid-combat utility. It can be combined with anti-magic shell. It can be used outside and inside of combat. It is so flexible. You will always pick this. You will always use it. You can actually prevent it from being interrupted. It is absolutely a game winner. That's a tier S ability for me. And that's in one-on-one, -on -one, where it's weakest. 
It's better in FFA and it's better in four on four than it is in one on one. It's better in two on two. It's better in every single one. And even in one on one, it's a game winner. Okay, transmute goblin alchemist. Transmute is an almost instant kill. It's not as instant as charm because charm is a point and click immediate cast point. But alchemist actually throws a little gold trinket uh, through the air, which I believe can be dodged or disjointed if you put the unit in the zeppelin. But I'm not 100% sure about that. The unit may still die when he's inside the zeppelin. Uh, either way, uh, transmute is a virtually an instant kill, and it turns the unit into money. This used to be 80% of the unit's gold cost. So if he casted 300 gold, you would get 240 gold as the alchemist by killing the enemy unit, by vaporizing them, by atomizing them. Now, uh, after that, it was buffed in, I believe, 2018 to be a 1.25 factor. So you would get extra gold out of it. Uh, but now it has been nerfed back to 100%, which is still more than it was in 2010, but less than it was in 2018. A factor one. The cooldown is incredible. Isn't it 45 seconds as well? For an instant kill unit. Yeah, 45 seconds, 150 mana. That's the same as charm. And then 100% of the target's unit gold cost. Range 650. This unit is an absolute game winner as well. Would you rather sell your opponent's unit? Or would you rather own your opponent's unit? Keeping in mind that owning an opponent's unit with charm actually transfers all of the unit specific upgrades of that unit to you. So if a unit has brute strength on the grunt, then you gain brute strength, even though you are night elf, you now have an orc upgrade called brute strength. If you gain a raider, you now own and snare, right? But if you gain a raider, you do not get plus three, plus three. So your raider is going to be outscaled in the late game against the opponent's raider. It's not going to be like your bears that have three, three. It's going to be a zero, zero. In that sense, owning a unit, you might be owning a weaker unit on average. Right? Whereas with alchemist transmute, you can get the money. You can then buy what you want. It's like a voucher for your birthday. Right? You can either get items from it, or you could build an expansion from it, or you could build your own preferential unit from it, with the only problem being is that that doesn't give you an instant benefit in the battle. Killing is instant benefit. Charm is an instant benefit. They're helping fight for your side. But transmute, even though in my opinion it's better, right? and you also get XP, true. I think transmute is better than charm, in the sense that you can choose what you spend it on, but you still need to go and shop. And Charm is one of the best in the game. That could still mean that tr uh, Transmute is also tier S. Again, keep in mind, this is for one-on-one. -on -one. It's not for uh, FFA or four on four, though this is uh, enough reason for people to kill you in FFA. Both Charm and Transmute, if you have either one of those, people team up and kill you in FFA because People hate losing what they have to attrition. Ah, oh, Transmute. Is it better than Phoenix and Doom and Avatar and, and, and Mas Telly and the other Avatar of Vengeance? I think it is better. It's also tier S. If I were to order them, I do think Charm and Inferno are better, but it's a tier S as well. And it's gonna be depending which one you prefer between these two. It really depends. Both of them do suffer from if there are no creeps on the map and it's dota arena only aka your heroes my heroes suddenly these two don't do anything anymore if the opponent has no units then you can't make use of these whereas you can still use infernal meta storm earth fire and to a degree tranquility so that is their weakness nonetheless they still deserve to be there because you've now made an opponent not be able to make units in an rts which is still pretty nice volcano Ooh, 17 april patch actually saw a ptr patch change of nerfing volcano who could have predicted that 
who could have predicted that that's like predicting that the next diablo 5 game will not have a pre-order diablo 5 comes out sell one time no extra cost right and there's not going to be a pre-order everyone gets the game at the same time and there will be no server issues wow you predict that that's insane if you had predicted volcano building damage is going to get nerfed <laughs> i would have called you a loony i'll be like wh why i would literally say why it's like really you would say yeah i would say why why do you think that have a good look in the mirror why did you think that volcano building damage needed a nerf nobody was talking about this nobody thought this <laughs> but blizzard did it yesterday in the ptr anyway and i think more interesting than the fact that volcano used to do triple damage against buildings but in the ptr it does double damage because blizzard thought that's too much more interesting than the actual factuality of the change the impact of the change more interesting than that is the why what are the steps that lead to whoever did balance at blizzard for the ptr yesterday what are the steps to them coming up with this change either they are a genius and have studied the telemetry of things they've seen when volcano does get picked the amount of damage it deals to buildings is impermissibly high or they have foreseen a future meta that does not yet exist where volcano is actually running rampant a kind of future dystopia with fire lords just dominating the meta in large part due to a very poorly m m understood overpoweredness of the volcano against buildings they've seen this and kind of like going back in time and stopping hitler they're stopping this volcano right now before it's too late before anyone realized what it was gonna do and I, it just blows my mind volcano is a channeled spell that deals damage to buildings and units it also does a stun and since recently aka in the last five years volcano can no longer stun fire lord himself <laughs> it doesn't damage self anymore because fire lord half the time accidentally stunned himself <laughs> Out, out of his own channel because volcano is so big and you cast it so infrequently you're fumbling the bag right it's like missing your shot when the football talent scout comes in during your high school practice it's like this normally never happens sir it's like oh my god a volcano and then stunned himself and it just blew up all over in your face so volcano is probably one of the most poorly understood ultimate abilities there is except by blizzard apparently uh, and has been nerfed so i think pre-patch tier s obviously uh you we're talking about actually having the power to erect the tectonic plates to rub up against each other and have such an amazing magnanimous magma uh eruption but now that it only does double damage against buildings instead of triple i think volcano is uh is, is is trash useless useless piece of garbage no but in seriousness i think volcano is actually a little better than earthquake and tornado but i don't know that it's as good as starfall or stampede is it ah uh, you know what Fuck it. it's tier b it's a b tier as well honestly the reason you will never see Volcano, even if you doubled or tripled its damage right now, is because nobody can get Fire Lord to level 6. You either win too fast because he's a rush hero, or you die because you enter the mid game with a failed rush hero. Alright, Bladestorm. Bladestorm was buffed recently. And I don't mean recently in the last 10 years. It was very recently buffed to do more damage and if i'm being honest i haven't had it that often it used to do 110 damage per second now it does 140 damage per second not bad huh <laughs> he's also immune to magic during it it is 200 mana which is very expensive it used to be a four minute cooldown three or f no three minutes but it was buffed 
to two minutes. Usually doesn't have enough mana to cast this when he gets to six. So usually doesn't even end up picking this. Right? In especially from 2004 to 2010 when I was competing the most, I probably picked this. It's really hard to say, but I probably pick this between 35 to 55% of the time when I get to level 6. Uh, when I did pick it and cast it, it was best on Druids of the Talon or Dryads. And doesn't, uh, and then maybe like Casters and Rifles, right? Yeah, when made against a uh, human. Uh, it is somewhat dodgeable. You can split your army and it does less. Um, sometimes Blade dies while casting it because while he's magic immune he's not physical immune he's not invisible or invincible uh it really isn't bad does it have as much impact as avatar doom phoenix mass teleport avatar vengeance honestly it might i'm thinking it's a b or it's an a but also i often don't take it which makes it a c it's tough to say i think honestly it's a tier b But it is probably better than every other tier B. But it's worse than most of the most of the A's. I don't think anyone would argue that mass teleport is equal to Blade Storm. 100% mass teleport is better. Avatar Vengeance is an always pick. This is a 50% of the time pick. The only reason that I'm not sure B is correct is because I'm basing it on its strength from 2003 to 2010. And there's two things that changed. Mirror image is more common now, and mirror image is less of a mana hog than windwalk. When you go to um, when you go to level six with mirror image style, sometimes you still have enough mana. Uh, it's an A or a B, and and it went up in damage. 30 bonus damage on top of 110 dps that's like what 27 percent bonus damage that makes it better than most of the times i casted it and it is a game winner sometimes but it is situational you may not have enough mana for it i think honestly it is a tier a it's an a or b but i think maybe it's a tier a because i am not only judging whether you have mana for it because you cast it on other things but also just how good it is by itself tier a it's a tough one it's an a or a b i think it's an a to be honest you would always pick any a ult over bs mm, i don't know i don't think you would necessarily always pick avatar or doom bladestorm has a bigger initial impact it only lasts for seven seconds but it does more in the first seven than Avatar or Doom. And it does more in the first seven than, Ava than Avatar or Vengeance. These last longer. But this does more uh, really early in the fight. It could win you the game. Uh, I think it is better... When you look at actually at how I split the abilities. Bladestorm has to be better than Volcano and Stampede. And Crypt Swarm. I'm pretty confident that A is the correct one. All right, let's move on. This isn't a democracy after all. You can make your own tier list. <laughs> all right, final one. Reincarnation. Reincarnation. Doesn't do anything by itself unless he dies. Either your opponent has to kill the cow or you will kill it yourself in order to help him along a bit, tip him over the edge. When the Taran Chieftain comes back, he comes back with full health and mana on a three or four minute cooldown, maybe four minute cooldown. A hero level six normally will cost you, I believe, something like 400 gold to retrain from the altar or no, maybe 300, 300 plus, 300, 350. It would cost you 700 gold to revive from the tavern instantly. This is almost instant, but it costs you nothing. That's worth a lot of money when he comes back tc6 is usually part of a win condition against night elf with talents or against human with casters and rifles it is definitely a type of game winner 
the problem is I can't put it in tier S because uh, it has too much conditional. Kind of like Resurrect, it repairs a death rather than enables the start of a fight. It does nothing initially. But because TC is someone that really likes to stay alive with his aura, reincarnation pretty much just guarantees that. It creates a kind of futility in an opponent focusing him. Whereas the TC often is a focus target. You play against Undead, they're definitely gonna Coil Nova, silence the TC from time to time. They're gonna Orb of Corruption focus him. Night Elves will mana burn him, kill him, entangle, focus fire him, etc. Right? So, um, and then suddenly that strategy doesn't work anymore. You have to leave him alive. It saves you a lot of money. Uh, he comes back in. I don't think he's an S, but he's 100% an A. Reincarnation A. So there you have it. That is my tier list. And just as a final note, if I needed to put one in tier D, one that isn't there right now, among all of these, just because it is looking so empty, which one would it be? Death and Decay kills buildings. Big Bad Voodoo can make your entire army invincible. Earthquake kills buildings. Tornado kills buildings. Uh, it's gonna be one of these three. This is only 125 mana, Earthquake. Tornado is 200 mana? Death and Decay is 250, but Lich has a lot. Death and Decay kills buildings fast. Tornado is slow. I think probably it might be Tornado. But Tornado is getting buffed in the PTR, guys. Double movement speed. Double movement speed. And then there's Animate Dead. <laughs> I think if one of these was Tier D, it might actually be Earthquake. But I'm not going to D anyone, because the only reason I would D anything is if i think it is actually just trash like never pick don't pick until level 10 and i don't think any one of these are don't pick until level 10. all right cool that is my ultimate tier list for warcraft 3. i hope you enjoyed it and did you think i got any of it wrong or was it 100 perfect if it was 100 perfect definitely give a like if you think that i should have done something differently leave a comment in the comment section. And of course, if you made it this far and you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Sub to the grub, hit that button, really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next video. Thanks, bye, for, bye. thanks for watching, bye.